Hi, this is Sandeep Jali, Hermanos Berlakis, presenting case 185 for the Manual of Percutaneous Coronary Interventions. This is a case that shows the adverse impact of having both severe calcification as well as severe tortuosity. Quick reminder for the PCI Manuals Live course, March 27-28 in Minneapolis, Minnesota, small intimate setting, practical algorithmic approach to common and complex PCI problems. The patient was an elderly gentleman with multiple comorbidities and previous coronary bypass graft surgery, who was sent for PCI of the right coronary artery because of angina. He also had a stress test that showed diffuse anterior ischemia and normal ejection fraction. And in the diagnostic angiogram done at an outside institution, he did have severe calcified disease on the RCA, but there was also this significant lesion in the proximal left subclavian artery, proximal to the takeoff of the lima. So when the patient came, our first uh, order of business was to assess the severity of that stenosis because especially since we had anterior ischemia, this subclavian lesion could cause anterior ischemia. So we engaged the left subclavian, we advanced the pressure wire across the lesion, but there was no significant gradient in that lesion. Therefore, this made it less likely for the subclavian stenosis to be causing the patient's symptoms. We then uh, proceeded with uh, attempting PCI of the right coronary artery. And because of the significant calcification and tortuosity, wiring was challenging. We did use a microcatheter, Corsair XS, supportive AL1 guide. Workhorse wire didn't go very far. We then used a Sion Black polymer jacketed soft non-tapered wire and made some good progress going to the distal RCA. We can appreciate the tortuosity of the vessel. And then uh, we switched uh, for the SU-03, which uh, is a wire of choice for such cases because it is very soft, 0.3 grams, tip load. And as a result, it is less likely to cause dissections or injury of the distal vessel. So after doing that, we try to deliver the microcatheter, but unfortunately, the microcatheter would not cross through the distal RCA into the posterior ladder. So this is an example of a microcatheter and crossable lesion, how to approach it. This is the algorithm. Small balloon is the first order of business, followed by grenadoplasty, more support with a guide extension or a more supportive wire, using various microcatheters, the wire cutting technique, if that fails, laser, atherectomy, and then subindimal techniques. In this case, we used uh, a Takeru and a subfire balloon, and uh, we were able along with the six friends uh, guide extension to deliver it down to the distal right coronary artery and dilate the lesion. And after that, we were able to advance the microcatheter to the posterior lateral. Given the extensive calcification, we decided to do atherectomy. There was the concern always with atherectomy that one may have a perforation or a big dissection if we do atherectomy. However, we did use orbital atherectomy. We did use the low speed of the orbital atherectomy. We did give vasodilators and did a few passes on the mid and distal right coronary artery. The patient did have um, ST segment depression that was significant and some chest discomfort, and that is why we stopped uh, the orbital atherectomy. We had some difficulty with losing wire position, and then the vessel looks pretty rough, but fortunately, we were able to wire it again using the microcaster and the guide wire, and this time we did use an Amplatz 2, so a little larger guide catheter, so as to get a little stronger support. We then uh, did intravascular ultrasound. Um, there is uh, calcification um, this diffuse around the vessel. There is uh, oval deformation. But uh, uh, we did have um, a true lumen position throughout the vessel. So what we did is uh, we predilated and tried to deliver a stent. But the problem is the stent would not deliver as we were trying to pull it back into the guide extension. The stent caught the guide extension and came back. So what to do next? Now we have uh, this RCA with heavy calcification and tortuosity and a stent that is undeployed floating in the distal RCA. In cases like this, retrieving the stent is almost impossible. And in most cases, it is best to try to deploy the stent. 
And that's exactly what we did. We used sequential small balloons, 1.5 up to 3.0. And uh, those were advanced through the stand and then eventually deployed the stand, having a nice result. After doing that, then we were able to deliver an Orsiro stand, which is a uh, um, low thin strut, low profile thin strut, and then cover the rest of the vessel with drag eluting stand. And this was the final result with nice uh, TIMI3 flow all the way to the distal RCA, the right posterior lateral, and the right PDA. Several lessons from this case. The first one is that when you have the combination of calcification and tortuosity, you know that things are likely to be tough. And sure enough, they were tough in our case. Second, support is key for these complex cases. Having the Amplatz second guide provided much better support than the Amplatz first. And the AL2, in addition to the guide extension, was critical for delivering equipment to this uh, coronary artery. Also, lesion modification is critical, so using a therectomy can help, and it can be done even in tortuous coronary arteries, especially when they are large like this one. Lastly, when trying to deliver equipment such as stents through calcification and tortuosity, it is possible for the stent to come off the balloon. And in most such cases, retrieving the lost stent is going to be very, very hard, and it's preferable to deploy the stand, or if we don't have wire inside the stand, to crush the stand with another new stand. In this particular case, we were able to advance sequentially larger balloons, deploy the stands, and then eventually able to deliver another stand distally and cover the entire vessel. Thank you.